Tired of the ground and pound? Welcome to the Backlash. Welcome, one and all. It's time for your Freedom's Firewall, the bane of spoon-fed, ready minds everywhere, fighting the human derangement syndrome at each and every turn. It's Brian. I'm in and very glad you joined us for today's ride. So what do you say? Let's get ready to mortal up. Good. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for episode 486. I say happy anniversary. I'll explain that in a little bit. But thank you so very much for joining us for damn near our 500th show here at Brian Brody. We super appreciate it. As you know, we have been known to be called of late the backlash. We're going to get into all of that uh, here as we get into the rest of our show. But I just quickly want to say hello and thank you again for joining us uh, bright and early this morning. And um, uh, we're very, very happy to have you here. Kind of a special day when you think of it uh, at Brian Brody and Associates in the Brownie household. If nowhere else, a very special day in my own mind it was one year ago today. I'll share. <laughs> I'll share this with you against my better judgment. One year ago today, I was out of my fifth brain surgery, my surgery to remove and to counter the effects of a golf ball sized tumor. One year ago today was my, let's, I call it knock on wood and say my final, fifth and final brain surgery to repair the leak, which is a good bit about. What we're going to talk about today, before we uh, we get to the rest of it, let me just say thank you for everyone that's followed me through all this time. You know, you think almost 500 episodes, yeah, but over a bri, however many years, yeah, we had to take a lot of time off <laughs> to accommodate the, you know, the arrival of our bouncing baby brain tumor, uh, and then all the different episodes in and around uh, my recovery from uh, not only the first surgery, but subsequently the four surgeries after that. So thank you for those that have stuck with you for very long. Thank you for making us uh, the, the, uh, on Facebook and on YouTube and on Twitter and on LinkedIn. Our numbers just can continue to grow. And I would say to you that they can continue to grow only because we have a steadfast belief in you. Someone said the other day, well, what's your agenda? My agenda is you. My agenda is the you that was you before your mind bought into all the mashugana, before you became the magnet for some of the the other things that really aren't yours to shoulder. So that's the agenda for me, and that's you, the ancient you, the pre-baggage you you know, as we talk about all the time. All right, so for today's episode, uh, you probably saw us tease it yesterday. Today's episode, uh, we're calling it your ultimate ally, and here's why. Here's one of the things that I've learned. Okay, so well, I had the first brain surgery, and they couldn't stop the leak. So what I was leaking was spinal fluid, and it would leak at the base of my skull, at the back of my neck, who knows where else uh, it ended up. And then through all the other subsequent surgeries, the shunt, and, you know, I just don't get the tagline, uh, more head scars than most Vikings. I've, I've lived that, so I get to kind of own that. But here's what I've come to find out. Here's the thing. Here's what happened to me between you and me. Here's what happened to me. I've begun to believe that because of that cerebral spinal fluid. They call it CSF because of that CSF leak. And sometimes I get up in the morning and I'd have like a, a, a cantaloupe, the back of my skull. I've begun to believe now that my pineal gland, if you're from, uh, familiar with it, some people call it by different names, but the pineal gland, that little gland that's in the side, you may know it as your third eye, right? Because it actually has receptors into it that judge light. I've begun to believe that what happened to me is through the spinal fluid leak, my pineal gland was a little dehydrated, let's say. It wasn't operating on all cylinders. It wasn't able. And let me just say this. I've waited for one year since the last surgery, one year since they put some chewed gum in me and, you know, some of that uh, spray plaster of Paris into the hole and just solidified me right up. Some gum, some dirt, just 
packed it in there. So now I'm no longer leaking spinal fluid. And here's what I've come through all my studies, all my investigations over the last year. I began to believe that I was dehydrated. My gland was dehydrated from cerebral spinal fluid. And then when they packed me up and through the meditation, through the breathing, through the full recirculation of my cerebral spinal fluid, now my pineal gland is such that it's getting a full complement. And with that full complement, the ability to see things differently, the ability to sense things differently. And it went almost like, you know, what they say that mosquitoes do a really good job of reproducing. If it's a drought, everyone's saying, oh, I've got to make sure you get rid of your water on your property. But in droughts, they seem to be supercharged. Well, with my pineal gland being dehydrated and then rehydrating, repressurizing itself, if you will, something happened to me. And it would, I think the best way to put it is it caused me to see the connection of things where I, I, I couldn't necessarily see them before. I had a sense, I had a, an inclining, let's say, but I was never able to really see the ultimate connection. So that's where the picture comes in today. You say, Brian, why would you take a glass of water to a river? That seems kind of strange. Well, it's in my estimation, that's exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about you. You are a collapse of that wave function. And what I'm able to see now is you are that little container that holds the rest of the wave. You're like the satellite office. You're like the divine spark. If you're a little more of a scientific type, the collapse of the wave function that we talk about, the collapse of the state vector, you are that satellite office of the wave. And it's become more clear to me every passing day that as that satellite office, you have a unique journey that you're on. And that unique journey is all about you manifesting not something in the outside world, but you manifesting inside of your own mind here in the labyrinth of life, the garden of the mortals itself, of manifesting that thing that the collapse of the wave function was all about. What are you here to do? And if you mortal up, and we said yesterday that when, you know, anyone can stare into a mirror. But it takes a pretty courageous person to let the mirror stare back into them. That's my way of saying it's the same way with the universe. When you look into the universe and you have the courage to stand there and let the universe look back at you, when you dovetail with that vision, that's when things start to happen in your life. And everything else is kabuki theater. Everything else is smoke and mirrors. Everything else is a bait and switch. So when we talk about you being a, con a collection of the actual energy of the wave, that means you're able to draw upon that energy. When we're not all caught up yelling, screaming, hollering, puffing our chest, using the courage that apparently some of us get from the keyboard, you're pretty courageous when you're working those thumbs, right, on your phone to send that text. When our energy goes away from blaming everyone else, when our energy is redirected, which is why I saw the time, you know, it's okay to be a narcissist from time to time. It's okay to be self-centered from time to time. When you redirect that energy inwardly, only great things happen because as of a, a spark of the divine, you're able to tap in to the natural resources that are the waves, the natural resources that surround you. And we get we get pretty caught up. You know, I, I wasn't going to say this. I did this as a joke the other night with a group of friends. Oh, I know, right? Social distancing. Oh, I did it over a, a tin can with some rope. We, of, of course, you know better. We wouldn't get together. Not with all the social distancing rules. No, that would, no. So we had some tin can and some yarn. I was screaming through the tin can. We were talking about this. And I go, did you ever wonder why they're secret societies? Why do they have to be secret? Did you ever wonder why the aliens, maybe we'll talk a little bit about more, uh, more about this tomorrow, but 
Did you ever wonder why the aliens are busy flying around in their spaceship, shape shifting, whatever that we are, right? Any of the different things uh, that the ancient alien folks have. Do you ever wonder why the aliens are just so freaking interested in us? Ever wonder? Again, going back to secret societies, why do they have to have secret societies? Because it's my estimation that you're one hell of a lot more talented than you remember. You're definitely stronger than you remember. You're more of a badass than you remember. And I think these secret societies, and maybe that's what the aliens are looking for, because they go, look, this pineal gland, when it's full of cerebral spinal fluid, there's unlike, there's nothing like it in the universe. It's unlike anything out here. So the aliens are busy dissecting cows and fields and drawing their crop circles and busy shining blue lights on people and all the, you know, all the secret societies have all their rituals and this and that. Do you know what they're for? To keep you from remembering. It's aiding in abetting your amnesia. Right? And I think about it. What the hell do the aliens want? It's like, look, if you could fly a spaceship around and it just darts left, darts right, up and down, you do all these things, you can communicate telepathically, you don't even need a mouth, which... That's got to be a bummer. You don't even get to eat barbecue if you like some. But, you know, just hear me out for a second. What is it that they're so drawn to? What is it secret societies are so afraid of? I think it's how special you are as a fully hydrated, fully cerebral spinal fluid coursing through your pineal gland. I think that's what they're afraid of. I think that's what they're scared of. I think that's what they want to figure out. And it's just importantly to keep you from remembering that you're comp- you're capable of doing any of this because you're a lot easier to corral when you forget who you are. We say it here all the time. You're a lot e- you're a lot easier to play like a puppet. If you're busy just going, "Oh, I'm a human." Oh, what are you going to do? You know, let me just, uh, 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 uh. no, I think they're doing all the research. I think the secret societies know what their aliens would find and they're doing anything they can to keep you from remembering who you ultimately are. And for me, now that the, the, the cerebral spinal fluid has been contained within its own little, its own little sphere, if you will. For full on a year, which is why I waited a year. Well, to be honest with you, I waited a year to also see if I was going to spring another leak, right? Right? Like that little boy trying to put his thumb in the dike. I wanted to wait and see. So I waited another full year to be able to talk about this. But here's what I know now. Here's what I've come to understand through all the study, all the investigation, or just and a lot of the personal reflection of the meditation and the breathing and, and visualization, though not the way you would normally think of it. All the things we talk about here on the show. That when you are fully hydrated, your third eye starts running the show. Not when you're busy screaming, not when you're busy pointing fingers, not when you're busy, your ego's busy telling everybody how great you are. Nobody wants to hear it. Only you. You're the only one that cares. Believe me. No one else does. But when your third eye is fully functional and it's like, wow, this spinal fluid, man, this has got it going on then that third eye looks for opportunities that you would not see otherwise. And that third eye is like, wow, Brian, you're a little off when you talk about weaponizing your moment, when you talk about using everything around you. I think what happens is that third eye, fully sealed in, fully functional, fully ready for the moment at hand, the labyrinth of life itself, fully functioning the way nature intended, the way the divine intended. When that happens, you're firing on all cylinders and everything, everything, everything looks up the way it should. And you begin to command your surroundings as opposed to your surroundings commanding you. So I'd look a little more into this third eye. We'll be talking about it some tomorrow. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, uh, what, what are we going to do on the show? Oh, yeah, tomorrow's episode, which is what? When we have the um, the day after the big show. 
So what do we say here? This is 480. Oh, so 485. Electrify your legacy. We'll be talking about that a little bit more tomorrow here on the Brian Brody Show, which you can reach on over to mortalup.com. If you haven't signed up already, uh, please do so. We've got our uh, morning vitamin, right, which is a way of, of philosophically jumpstarting your day. We'll be able to do that. But tomorrow's show is going to be electrifying your legacy. And it's going to we're going to be talking, excuse me, we're going to be talking a little bit about little more about your third eye and what you can do in that particular moment and all of time to be aware the synchronicities, the serendipities, the chance occurrences, the flukes of luck, all of that. Well, what if it isn't? What if the aliens are busy trying to abduct human beings, right? Because they're jealous. They don't have a third eye. Well, you can do all this other cool stuff, right? If you're a green or a was it lizard or a reptile? Or this other, you can do all those other cool things, but the one thing you can't do is you don't have a third eye, Jack Butt. So you don't get to do any of this. Maybe that's what they're looking for. And maybe that's what secret societies, maybe that's the truth to it. They're trying to do everything they can to keep this from you, right? Fake news, fake news, fake news. Keep you embattled. Keep you embattled, maybe even a better word, with all the other distraction going on so that you don't have the opportunity to remember who you are, where you are, what you are. But just suppose for a second that I'm right, that you're like that. You're like a router. You're, you're, you're a router for the universal Wi-Fi system, right? You got to get Wi-Fi. Oh, we need to have a router in the house to pick up the Wi-Fi, pick up Netflix and, 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 and cable news and to get SoundCloud and this and that. Well, what if your third eye is a router for the universal Wi-Fi? What if everything, the Akashic Record, all the different things, all the energy, all the intelligence that humanity has ever known, what if you are that router that that gland is to pick up from the labyrinth of life itself, to pick up everything going on around you, to make certain you can achieve everything that the collapse of the wave function is all about? What if you really are here for a reason? What if it's already in you, right? It, ca- it came pre-attached. You have to look for it. It's not about being a human getting where you're constantly running around looking for some bobble or widget or twink trinket or whatnot. What if it's already in you and magnifying the moment, a fully hydrated third eye? Maybe that's what I'm feeling. But I promise you the feeling is at times almost overwhelming. And, of, of course, it's quickly to point to it and say, oh, wow, you know, it's PTSD. So there's other things. But just for a second, suppose that's it. So we'll be getting into that, as I say, tomorrow a little. Uh, we'll be getting into it a little greater in depth. And the show is called Electrify Your Legacy. If you can join us, don't forget to head on over to mortalup.com. You can nominate your low-life making headlines. Come on, you know you want to. Uh, nominate your mortal up, someone doing really great stuff in the world. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel over there. Thank you very much for that. And we're very excited about that. And as always, please remember, just reach out, give us a holler, give us a scream. Let us know if there's anything we can do for you. We're all over it here at Brian Brian Associates. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump out of here so I can start answering all the emails uh, from people saying, oh, did you really mention aliens? reptilians, the greens. Did you really say UFOs on your show? So I'll be dealing with all those people. (laughs) All the people that are in secret societies going, I can't believe you outed us for being in a secret society. Well, in any event, I'll handle those emails. You go. Have an absolutely fantastic day. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you so very much for joining us. We are, once I do this, we are out.